actually it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense. We ask our YN or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet to get an isolation with the with the linebacker. Tell the tackle to take the defensive end if he's over him, if he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker here, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here, and a seal here, and try to run this play in the alley. What's up, guys? Welcome into Packers Total Access. My name is Clayton. You can check us out on Packernet.com. Find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. Joined alongside Tim, live in Green Bay. We got Jacob on the border of Minnesota and Wisconsin in here to talk a little Packers tonight, man. We got a bunch of stuff to cover. First of all, gentlemen, how we doing? Look at Tim, man. I'm dressed sharp over that. I can't tell if he's about to plow a field or, or run for governor. You know what I'm saying? My man got all the bases covered over there. This is my uh, this is my good flannel. Put on, my, <laughs> put on my good flannel for you guys today. I can't pull off the flannel, man. I, I look, I look bigger than a whale if I put flannel on, man. So you, you you're wearing it well there tonight, Jacob. I see you got the uh, the zipper down to the navel tonight, man. How you doing? Bro? I'm wearing a flannel too. You can't quite see that it is a flannel. Uh, I only pretty much wear flannels because it hides the fact that I'm rather boxy. And uh, <laughs> has more of like a slimming effect on me. So, anyways, I'm I good. I think you can play the mic, man. Let's sign them up, Clayton. What do you think? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to try that then, man, because I am I'm quite I'm more round than boxy, to be honest with you. So that's probably probably. Hey, cool. I don't want to hear any complaints. I turn sideways and disappear. So don't. <laughs> I've heard people say before, hey man, you look like you're in shape. I'm like, I'm a shape. Round is <laughs> a shape. A pair, uh, not shape. In shape. Yeah, kind of a pair. Yeah, that's more of it. Suffering from that no acetol, you know what I'm saying? That's, uh, that's going around. <laughs> yeah. the Hank Hill disease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Hank Hill disease, exactly. All right. So uh, anyway, that's a perfect segue to give a shout out to our sponsor tonight, Ticket King, <laughs> the official really ticket provider of Packers Total Access, Wisconsin based since 1992, specializing in Packers tickets. They are Wisconsin's largest ticket source. They've got offices next to Lambeau Field as well as in Milwaukee. You can click on the link in the video description that'll send you to theticketking.com where you can register for free as a customer. Get yourself ready for that May schedule release. They're going to be able to save you a lot of money this coming year on Packers tickets compared to some of the bigger name companies. So make sure you check them out over at theticketking.com. We appreciate them supporting the show. Um, so a lot of stuff to cover, really. Um, it's funny, man. Every day I think, okay, it's going to go kind of quiet. Probably going to run out of topics. At any day now, we'll lean on the history. But, man, it seems like every day something else drops, and we got plenty to talk about. Let's talk about some visits, first of all. Uh, Jacob, Tim, I'm sure you guys seen this come across the wire. LSU defensive tackle Mason Smith had, uh, I guess, posted this on Instagram and tagged Green Bay, Wisconsin, as he was flying into town for a top 30 visit. So, obviously, big program. There, when it comes to uh, the LSU Tigers, I was going to kind of see where Mason Smith is on my board real quick. Uh, Jacob, I guess we kick off with you, man. How do you feel about Mason Smith? Do you have anything on him right out of the gate? Um, you know, yeah, LSU guy. A lot of people had him as one of those sneaky picks. I could see him being a Packers pick because, once again, it's a, it's just a guy we haven't talked about. Um, I know that he graded out fairly well in PFF. Um, decent size. For whatever reason, it just hasn't been mocked to the Packers barely at all. Um, mm -hmm. I've never taken them, I don't think, personally in a mock draft, which doesn't mean anything, obviously. But it's just doesn't seem like it's on uh, a lot of people's minds. And that's where I would just a penny for the thoughts of uh, Goody and how they have that horizontal draft board. So, yeah, I see you have him. Is that 194? Yep, 194. <clears throat> Correct. And uh, I'm trying to think that I actually pulled the trigger. You know, I went with Gabe Hall earlier today. We'll talk about that later. But uh, so Mason Smith. Out of LSU, looks like he was the 200 uh, highest graded defensive lineman, interior defensive lineman uh, in 2022. Last year, he fell to 613. And then the consensus big board at the time had him in the 71 spot, though. So they had him pretty high. And then, of course, the 33rd team had him at 128. Again, uh, he scored, uh, I think, a, an eight plus 
in RAS, so pretty decent there as far as RAS score. And, again, interior defensive lineman from LSU. Tim, you got anything on Mason Smith? How do you feel about it? you think this is one of those uh, – I guess we're we're looking at probably, what, fifth, sixth round, I, I would imagine? Something in that range. Yeah, I've got him 164 on mine and then uh, 12th overall positionally. Um, he's a motor guy, high motor guy. We talked about that, you know, one of those high motor uh, defensive players. <laughs> Doing donuts out there on him for sure. You know, he's got the size. He's, you know, an aggressive player. Um, you know, based on my research, he's got a little bit of a issue getting off blocks. So that's something that they have to shore up a little bit with him. But um, no, I think in the, you know, fourth or fifth round, he'd be a good, good value. Yeah. Gotcha. That he's, uh, yeah. I like how he spells his name too. Mason Smith. I like that. <laughs> So evidently the consensus big board has them in the 68 spot. So I need to make sure we're leaning on the consensus big board. Obviously that's the media that's kind of plugged in with everybody. And, and we want to make sure we're, we're looking at for position for potential draft position, as opposed to my board, my board is more like, okay, here's what I personally think the value is. So we'll try to lean on this a little more. So again, Mason Smith, with that being said, could potentially be a second to third round pick. if the consensus big board. I mean, that's where I'm a little bit confused because I've seen a lot of people talking about how Rook and Michael Hall Jr. are possible sneaky picks in that late second to third round area. And I just I didn't see Mason Smith um, in that grouping. Obviously, there with Tavondre Sweat, I'm assuming that down four spots. That's all that the this incident has cost him. I mean, he's kind of lucky, man. If that really is yeah. all the, the farther he's fallen um, to the second round, uh, that seems kind of crazy. But. There is a, a decent grouping there of, of guys. You know what's crazy? Um, <clears throat> not to take it off topic or anything, but uh, I listened to an athletic podcast today, and they had a, a draft specialist guy. Initially, I didn't quite know if I could trust him or you know what, what his credentials were, but after listening to the whole podcast, I really think he knows what he's talking about. And in his opinion, he said there were only four star defensive players, meaning that they're going to make an immediate starting impact on a roster. And he had the four as uh, Cooper DeGene, Quinnon Mitchell, Dallas. Uh, uh, who am I thinking of from Dallas? Dallas Gant. Turner. Dallas Turner and Lafay Latu. So, and that was it. He said everybody else he's not really sold on. And I thought, wow. But the other two that he had there were Byron Murphy and Jerzon Newton as the like the next tier of guys that were just like you got to get them on your team. So. Right. I don't know, man. It just kind of shakes things up, especially because now he also, in his opinion, uh, talked about how Cooper DeGene, most NFL scouts see him as a straight up safety. A lot of them apparently are not looking at him as an outside boundary corner, maybe a slot corner, but most of them are looking at him as a safety. So does he fall possibly to 25 where as of like yesterday, I would have thought no way. So it was a really interesting podcast. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the other thing that's catching my attention is, Johnny Newton, you know, he peaked at eight. He's down all the way to 27 now. Um, I don't you know who knows if that's going to be accurate or not. But uh, if you go by the consensus big board here, then Byron Murphy is hands down the best interior defensive lineman in the draft. And again, it, it, this doesn't matter. What matters is what true NFL team, you know, NFL execs and what their board says. But um, just interesting there. And as far as the mock, they've got Braden Fisk going 45 um, to the Saints. Chris Jenkins, they've got him going to the Eagles at 53. Um, not if we have anything to say say about it, right? And then, uh, yeah, Aurora is uh, 49 to the Bengals. So everyone else is just kind of a crapshoot, man, including Byron Murphy and Johnny Newton. Nobody really knows where they're going to fall to. Um, let's go to the chat real quick. We don't want to get too far behind, and then we'll go to the next visit. Um, M. Smitty, 1386 in the in the chat, says, Clayton, I think your next mock, you need to be banned from taking noob and laughing emojis. So we did a – I'm not going to, so quit asking. We did a mock earlier today. I just – I cannot pass him up at 41, man. Like, he's in the top 30 on my board. Um, let's take a look at the consensus board. We haven't looked at that in a while. They've got him – he peaked at 35. He's currently sitting 46, and he's being mocked to the t to the Titans at 38. Like, how can you not take him at 41? What I if we get to... Cooper DeGene at 25, and then we decide to play him at safety? Now, now at 41, what yeah. are we thinking? That's the yeah. only scenario I could see not taking uh, Tyler Newbin with our second pick. 
That's a great point, Tim. That's a great point. And kind of like what we talked about with Rake Straw, you know, could it be someone like like with Cooper, you play him on the outside in the base and then kick him to the kick him to the slot and the nickel. Um, yeah, if you if you go that route too and you just okay, we're just gonna play him at safety, then at 41, do you go, yeah, forget Tyler Newbin, let's go with an outside corner or maybe a slot, you know what I mean? Like it's gonna be interesting for sure. Um, Jacob. And be honest, man. Be brutally honest here. Oh. Am I off base taking Tyler Newbin at 41? Like, I can't pass it up, man. It's like you and five below, bro. I got to have all the deal. <laughs> um, no, I don't think you're off base at 41. <laughs> I, thought, I think that maybe at 25, we might be a little bit stretching. But, again, who knows? Because, like, we're talking about here, and um, like D-Man says about here, the, the big boards can be whatever. Um, when the bullets start flying, when the draft order never really follows exactly or any, anywhere even near what the draft pundits, the quote unquote experts, get get paid to say. So I don't know, man. Um, Great point, man. In, in my opinion, I wouldn't say that at 41, it's at all a stretch. Um, but yeah, honestly, I love what Tim said. If we could, <laughs> if we could get to Gene at 25, and then after that, I just feel like it's, you know, that secondary immediately becomes um, a little bit more intriguing there. So. Might be something like DeGene at, at, at 25 and then Christian Haynes at 41 or something like that. You know what I mean? And no, Christian Haynes won't get drafted by us. Peter Bukowski says. <laughs> that was, yeah. Marty Jacob, why do you got to do this to me? Huh? Okay. <laughs> he does it for a living, so I just know it's going to happen. He just cracks me up, man, how people <laughs> they are so – and, and the same people that were screaming, this will never happen, that will never happen, and it happened. And they don't revisit that and go, hey, yeah, man, I was off on that. It's just on to the next. This will never happen. <laughs> but anyway. Let's well, the average it. person's reaction to our draft picks is usually. Who? It's exactly right, man. <laughs> I remember Quay Walker like it was yesterday. We were all like, what? Uh, uh, okay, uh, hold up a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, we knew him. <laughs> exactly. Chris in the chat said, I'm convinced you got to go cornerback in the first round for the best all around draft. That's been the 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 commonality this whole mock draft, you know, extravaganza season here is if you don't take corner in the first round, you kind of feel like you're chasing you tell the rest of the draft trying to trying to make one make sense, you know. But again, it doesn't matter what we think. It's it matters what does Goody's board look like. I know y'all get tired of hearing me say it because I get tired of saying it, but um it's so true. Omer in the chat said 12 more days is all then the mock drafts will end. So Man, that's crazy. I say we do a mock draft just for Omer. <laughs> it's all right now. <laughs> I love how, how Omer hates the mock drafts, but he always mentions the mock draft. <laughs> yeah, that works. It's that Barba Streisand effect. <laughs> I think he's a, a closet mock draft lover, to be honest with yep. you. I think he's, yeah. He just doesn't like our mock drafts. He probably just likes his mock drafts. Hell, I don't like our mock drafts either. <laughs> I'm on your side, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's the thing, too. As soon as we get through with this mock draft season, guess what, Omer? Like Chris N says, 2025 mock draft starts. Yep. So there you go. Get ready. <laughs> yep. D-Man in the chat said, big boards be damned. You already hit on this one, didn't you, Jacob? Yeah, I said that. Bullets, yes. Yeah, when the bullets start flying, the draft order never follows the draft pundits' predictions. Um, I think we already hit on that again. But uh, it's Who's so Mel Piper anyway? Yeah, that's a great question, man. I don't know who he you is. You know who Mel Kuyper is. He's got that good hair, man. <laughs> like a man. Okay, who in the hell is Mel Kuyper, in a way? I just love a hey, rest in, in peace, Chris Mortensen. Hit it one more time, Tim, and look at Mort's eyes on this. Okay, who in the hell is Mel Kuyper, in a way? He didn't blink. He's just like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> love to see it. All right, we had us another visit. Get ready for this one. Uh, our man at Easton Butler said the Packers are hosting University of British Columbia offensive lineman Giovanni Manu. I get Manu. Who? <laughs> on a top 30 visit per the Schultz report. So, um, Jacob, you got anything on our guy here, man? Uh, other than the fact that clearly nobody told him they were about to take this picture because he's – he looks terrified. He looks terrified. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. No, I um. So British Columbia. Forgive me if I'm uh, not that smart, but is that Canada? Yes, sir. Um. Okay. All right. So we're drafting Canadians <laughs> now. Shout out to the T-Birds. Yeah, T-Birds. Cool. That's cool. 
This looks uh, like one of those uh, undrafted free agent prospects, right? Probably what probably what you're going to have here, UDFA. As far as my big board, I added him in, but the only thing I could find, the only thing, was this right here, 340 on the consensus big board. So hey, he peaked at 340 though, right? He did peak there. Yeah, he's he's holding steady. <laughs> so again. Yeah, that's a that's a bad look there. Even his hands too. I was. It's like. Yeah, he, I it guess looks he's, like he's looking for someone to dance with. It looks it, like he just got like stumbled upon a spider because that's how I look when I. <laughs> <laughs> to also, me, it, that's it Clayton. Looked, that's Clayton boxing out at the buffet line. That's what that is. <laughs> that's right exactly there. right. <laughs> hey, the Golden Corral when they bring out that prime rib. That's exactly Hold what on, I look like right there. If I back, I'm I'm about three feet of space, guys. I just, I just, I don't think that we should be drafting anybody from Canada lately. That Canada is not in a. I, when I think of Canada, I think of the South Park depiction where they're just running. Uh, when they show them and their their cars all have square wheels and they're just. <laughs> Our That's Canadian bad. listeners right now hate you so bad. Oh, they probably love me because they know it's true. <laughs> there you go. All right. Let's go. So there were the two visits again. Mason Smith, defensive tackle out of LSU, and then Giovanni Manu um, out of uh, University of British Columbia. So we'll see if that uh, kind of uh, equals out to anything. Now, the other news today, and Jacob, I know you jumped in here and talked about it right off the bat, was Rob Domoski. Um, on Wildy and Tausch said something. I double checked with Tim. I was like, Tim, man, am I losing my mind or have I been saying this for two weeks? Like, this this is something we keep talking about because I heard it from Rob Domofsky like roughly two weeks ago. It was at least a week ago. It might have been two weeks ago where he was talking about Zach Tom being a really good right tackle, a <laughs> right guard, or a Hall of Fame center. And, uh, Today, he said it on Wildy and Tausch, and the internet blew up, right? Um, so let's just go ahead and play the clip again. This is from Wildy and Tausch earlier today, um, where I think Tauscher and Jesse were on location somewhere. Wildy was back at his home in Green Bay, and uh, they had Rob Domofsky on the line asking him about Zach Tom. So let's just go ahead and play the clip here, and, uh, and we'll all dive into it. I definitely want everyone in the chat be ready, because I want to get your take on this, because it's a very, very interesting topic. I think – if you had a guess right now at this time, yep. is Josh Myers on this team after uh, when we were looking at what is it, April 13th today? Is he on this team next year? No. But in fact, I think the starting center is on this team right now, but it's not Josh Myers, Who the is? long-term starting center. Who's it going to be? I, I was told by uh, a couple oh, people this that within, within the organization, oh, oh, okay. they, think, they, they think Zach Tom – is a really good – is a Pro Bowl right tackle, an all-pro guard, and a potential Hall of Fame center. Ooh. So there's your set. There's your center. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> Man, That's is it nice when a beat – it is nice when beat guys bring takes like that. <laughs> Holy That's ass. a direct – Quote from that is take. That's and imploding and someone wow. in the building. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that that is not. That's called reporting. That's wow. That's not, that's Holy. Not, that's not bold prediction. Jason, did you hear that? I did. In fact, I've wow. heard that from Rob multiple times. Yeah, Rob, you're, you're my number on one. Hey, he Rob, you are my us. number one. <laughs> Holy cat. So you're telling me somebody in that front office told you, because we, that's, I was just saying, Zach Tom gonna have to worry. They draft the tackle. You don't have to worry. He's gonna be, you know, if he wants to be the tackle, he's gonna be the tackle. Yeah, that's, You're that's telling one me, of the benefits of going to the combine and being out late at night and running into yeah, people in the building. Uh, what a bold and sexy take that was. Hall of Fame <laughs> center is what you're telling me. <laughs> Dwight Stevenson. Wow. Uh, Dermani <laughs> Dawson. Zach Tom. Well, well, we'll see. Wow. All right. So there you go. And again, I think Wildy was kind of hinting at it there too. Like you've been on vacation, Tyler. We've been talking about this, right? Um, but it's just crazy because it hit Twitter and just went, you know, ran ran absolute nuts. Um, Mike Wall chimed in though. Before everybody gets too excited about that, here's what Mike Wall had to say. I'm gonna kill my cam. I got to get up here like Papa Bailey and read this. Mike Wall said, "Quote: People in the organization, end of quote, might not be the men and women in the personnel department with the palm face emoji." He said, Jason Kelsey, 14 and a half million, Lane Johnson, 20.2 million. 
Packers media hits first take status on this fine Friday afternoon. Right tackles don't agree to $6 million artificial ceiling cap. And he was quote tweeting Cheesehead TV, where Cheesehead TV said, offensive line shakeup, question mark. I was told by people in the organization that they think Zach Tom is a Pro Bowl right tackle, an all-pro guard, and a potential Hall of Fame center. So Mike went on to say, he dropped this ticker down, not to rant, but can you imagine the conversation with Zach's agent about the impending six to seven million dollar drop in average annual um, value in his next contract? Not to mention the fact it is incredibly easier to find a center than a right tackle. So a little bit of a wet down there with uh, Mike Wall's take. But just want to go around the horn, first of all. Let's get everybody's take. Tim, I see Tim up there grinning. Tim's loving every minute of this. I, what I do you guys the applause, man. We had to give him a round of applause because that's Mike Wall being Mike Wall, 100% authentic. That's how he sees it. It's a great point. It's something that a lot of us haven't considered. However, that being said, I do believe Zach Tom would be a stud at center for sure. I think he could play anywhere on that line. Um, but yeah, there are, uh, you know, contract numbers to consider and a lot of moving pieces. And I like Mike's little, uh, subtle dig there at, uh, Rob Domofsky, you know, citing a yeah. source in the building to be named or, or never named, uh, who knows, <laughs> I, it might've been a dude filling, filling up the, uh, the, uh, Coke machine in the break room or something that he got the, uh, <laughs> the information from, but, um, yeah, I just I love Mike Wall, man. Calls it 100 percent authentic all the time. Yeah, I, I just imagine Rob Domoski was in the bathroom washing his hands and somebody was back there in the in the back stall talking on the phone, you know, with, with their buddy, like, man, what we ought to do is this. And it got my source. Let's run with it. Here we go. So uh Jacob, what do you think, man? Anything to it? Do you agree with it? Would you like to see them try that? How do you feel? We've talked about this before, and, and you know, you guys know how I feel about tackle. Tackle is tier one of importance, right? Yep. Um, so That's why we just draft Cedric Von Prahn, and we're we're good. We don't have to have this conversation anymore. You right? had it half right, Tim. It's actually Zach Frazier, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. We've all got kind of our, our favorites at the center position. Anyway, Jacob, what do you think about this? Well, it's APJ, first of all, the – slight both of you jackson powers johnson should be the center if we're going to take those two you named aren't going to be on the board Thank when we're you, Chris. uh <laughs> but i was more thinking along the lines of um what carly ray is thinking now it's like are we gonna be drafting a right tackle that's what pete said too are we looking to if we are going to kick that guy in and to be honest so i'm more of the um as much as i want to think that i'm like an emotional loving kind of guy when i really stop and start thinking about the moves i'd make I'm kind of a goody I kind of don't care. I'm going to cut your throat. Hey, if you can be a better center, that means we don't have to pay you as much. And also we could get a draft, a right guard that could, <clears throat> you know, we don't have to pay him for maybe two, three, four years. That's okay. Right. Um, and so I start crunching numbers and I'm like, man, why would I not play chess with these pieces? I have, we have so much talent in the skill positions. We really need to bolster the trenches. Um, that's where I'm, my head is at. And um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> like I said, I'm getting, kind of cold-blooded now i don't like it <laughs> so when you look at the top tackles obviously joe alt peaked at one he's currently sitting not bishanu peaked at five he's sitting 14th fuaga peaked at 11 he's sitting 15th uh fontana is in the 19 spot that's as high as he's been i think we should watch him i think that that might be a guy that we either trade up for or if he fall like i think that that might be the one because he can play He's like, uh, what's his face? They can play apparently a five, uh, Graham Barton. <clears throat> I think the Packers, if he falls because of all this stuff going on, they could they could trade up to get him. Gotcha. What do you guys think of Patrick Paul out of Houston? Yeah, he's uh, he peaked at 37. He's sitting in the 67 spot. Um, let's see if I can find him real quick on my board. I'll tell you kind of why he falls, where he falls on my board. Patrick Paul, I think he was a little lower on mine, Tim, if okay. I remember right. Um, Big dude though, 6'8, 3, 329 or something, 330, 330s. Not too much lower. I've got him in the 74 spot. Uh, he was the 65th highest graded tackle in 2022, jumped all the way to 15th in 2023. Consensus Big Board early had him 49th when I took this information. Um, so it was probably right in the middle of him peaking to 37. And then the 33rd team has Patrick Paul in the 44 spot. So that might be a potential 
41st or 58th pick, right? Right there. So um, for me, though, this was interesting. Let me pop this up real quick since we're kind of on the topic of tackle. I want to give a shout out to uh, Steve Cook on Twitter. He tagged uh, me and Ryan in this and said, did the Packers pick um, breakdown by pick? Okay. So, again, just wanted to give him credit for sending this over. We appreciate you, Steve. And uh, this is a draft day predictor on ESPN analytics side. So you can click whatever pick you want, like the 25th pick, and it'll show you who is most predicted to go in that that pick right there, right? So the top one is actually uh, Tyler Gotten, offensive tackle. The second highest number here would be Amarius Mims. You know, I've mocked him a couple times. And then Cooper DeGene, then Nate Wiggins, then Jerzon Newton, then Chop Robinson, then Troy Fontana. So – if you look at the two that kind of run away with it, it's Tyler Gotten and Amarius Mims. So when you look at those guys here on the board, um, on the big board, then you've got Amarius Mims in the 23 spot, definitely within reach there for 25, although they've got him mocked to number 20 in the consensus database here. Tyler Gotten went number 30 to Baltimore, so that's definitely right there in the ballpark. So if, if that comment is true from Rob Domofsky, I think that would be the way to go. And, again, I'm not saying it's true. I'm not saying I disagree with Mike. I understand what he's saying there. I think it's going to be a hard sell on Zach Tom to take that kind of that kind of pay hit there, if you will. Um, but if you go out and let's say with the 25th pick, you drafted Tyler Gotten, you plug him in a right tackle, you kick Tom to center, and uh, then you draft another guard, let's say. And like you said, Tim, what if you did try to kick Josh Myers to right guard? I don't know if you can or not. Um, and then let's say you do pick up a Christian Haynes or someone like that in, in spite of what Peter Bukowski says. Um, now all of a sudden your offensive line is kind of revamped, right? But uh, what did you think about that graphic there, though? Let's go around the horn with it. Um, anything stick out to you there, Tim? I'm sad that Ennis Rakestraw is so far over to the right. So. <laughs> He's the oh. next to last one. Isn't he? <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, and everyone else's sweetheart there, Terry and Arnold, too, is pretty That's, low on that. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. So, um, what the hell's Tyler Newman at right here? This is ridiculous. <laughs> See, there you go. There's a little bit of frustration. <laughs> it goes to him. show, though, like you know, this could be completely wrong, too, right? I mean, oh, absolutely. predictor, just like you know, we we like to make our predictions, and, and really, we don't even do that, we're not like saying, hey, this is who they're gonna take, we're just kind of picking favorites here. and people that we like. Um, but yeah, it's frustrating to see so many names that I had higher up, um, you know, for our first pick um, down on this chart. So we'll see. We've got uh, 12 days, like Omer said, right? Yeah. Prince in the chat says Tyler Gotten is a right tackle and was in for a visit. Um, let me do a quick little search here of Tyler Gotten and see if he was also a senior bowl guy. I'm not sure if he was or not. I think he was. I Oklahoma. Let's see here, Tyler Gotten. Where are you at, sir? Why are you running from me? Let's going? see here, Tyler Gotten. I'm going to have to do the search. Darn it, the heck. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on? Hold on. Tyler Guyton, according to 33rd team on the weaknesses side, inconsistent reps, body control in space, body composition. Does that sound like anyone else that currently plays on the offensive line for the Packers? Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of Guyton, to be honest. If, if it was up to me, I would definitely um, – I, I, between Guyton and Mims, I keep thinking that we're going to take one of those, and I just – I don't like Mims because the dude's had like five games. It's like eight, realistically, I think, that he started. Um, he's a freak of nature, but it's like between him and Guyton, it's like I just don't – I hate the Packers drafting on potential. Show me what they've done and draft them out of results. It's what I want to do. But. Man, Jacob coming in with the – with the hot take there. I like it. Um, check out my board. This this may very well be the pick, guys. And I don't know if it's going to be 25 or not. But, um, of course, that's what they were predicting there, right? I've got him in the 60 spot. Um, 204th graded tackle in 2022. 268 in 2023. Took a slight step back. Consensus big board early had him in the 36th spot. The uh, 33rd team had him at 25. Daniel Jeremiah has him as number 17 in the entire draft with his first top 50 list. Wow. He scored well above a nine in RAS. That checks the box. Again, 50, uh, right around 50% of our draft picks, the last two drafts, 
were at the senior bowl, right? And that purple block right there, guys, that means this player was at the senior bowl and he was a top 30 visit for the Packers. So this might be who Goody's got his eye on here. If you go off precedent, right? Um, I know this, if Goody takes him, he's 60th on my board. If Goody takes him, then that means he thinks he's well within, you know, uh, the value of the 25th uh, overall pick. I think that pretty much would say, all right, guys, the plan is probably to try to kick Tom into center. Now, he may come into camp if you draft someone like this, and they'll not be ready. And if they're not ready, then, hey, you let him sit for a year, you keep Josh Myers at center, and then you work him into that role, right? That's definitely a possibility, too. So, with Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put me in charge of the comments. <laughs> Just a couple of Okay, Jacob, you do this for a living. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I love it. So, yeah, him at 60, it seems like a reach for 25 for me. Um, but again, Daniel Jeremiah, 17, 33rd team, 25. Um, who the hell am I to say I'm right and they're wrong? So, uh, going to be interesting there to see how that. <laughs> Uh, Island blocking on the 33rd team strength side. So uh, that's important. That's what you want at a, at a tackle position, right? You know, either side of the line. Can you, can you isolate that man and just keep him on an Island away from the ball, away from your quarterback? So, uh, I mean, there's, you know, and yeah, he's, he's a big dude. He's got the size and he's an athletic freak. So you're right. It sure looks like a Goody type of pick. Yeah. Um, Cody McDougal in the chat says, Tim, am I wrong that they tried Zach out at center during camp last they year? They had Josh Myers at center. They had Zach Tom at center. They, they had, had Red Maddie at center. They had Sean Ryan at center. They yeah, had Tim Matt Tim Ramage. Tim. Matt Ramage played center a few reps. <laughs> um, yeah. That's so. a photo shot. That's a photo <laughs> shot right there. Yeah. Because his eyes, the defense yeah, is it's him. He, Ramage was just there like, hold my beer. And, you know. Exactly. It, that's how it worked. Yeah. No, but uh, yeah, for sure. Zach Tom had some reps, I believe. Can you uh, imagine running up to the defense as a middle linebacker trying to read Matt Ramage's eyes? Just saying, if he's playing quarterback, distinct advantage. I love Maddie, man. Maddie don't. Matt's Maddie, great. He's, he's just a national treasure, bro. I'm telling you. It doesn't matter what I got going on. If Matt says, hey, Clayton, come on the show tonight, I'm canceling my pod. Because that, that dude, anytime we get why together. Why don't we get him on here more? We need to, man. He's just he he's like he can fit right in. <laughs> he's he's busy doing doing things. You know what I mean? We've been on a couple of podcasts together, and I'm telling you, it's like therapy. It is like therapy. Like I come out every single time. I'm in a better mood every single time because yep. he just he doesn't Definitely. take anything too serious, including himself. It's just an absolute blast. Definitely at the the top of my list of people that I most want to run into when I'm at Lambo, oh, whether that's right. game day or whatever. That's that's one of the guys you're hoping you bump into for sure. Other than like Chris Farley, he's my favorite person I'd want to have a beer with. Like yeah. I would just be like, can we just sit here? And Chris right. Farley's like one of his like idols too, which oh, is yeah. Really so um yeah, love it, man. All right. So we hit on that again. Uh big shout out to Steve Cook. Thank you for sending that over, buddy. You keep that top information coming. We appreciate it, man. Um, let's see what else we got here. Let's hit on this mock I did earlier today and and just to kind of explain the theme behind the mock. Um, you know, the goal is to force ourselves to take a specific position with the 25th pick to try to steer the draft in, in a bunch of different directions, right? So with this mock here that we did on April the 7th, we took Jerzon Newton with def at defensive line there at the 25th pick. And then on the 11th, I took Chop Robinson, who fell right in our lap at 25. I think it's a little bit unrealistic, but we'll see what happens there. Now, today, I made myself take a cornerback. I took Kool-Aid McKinstry. And uh, there was someone that was that I wasn't allowed to take for sure. But we went Kool-Aid McKinstry with the 41st pick. Surprise, surprise, we got Tyler Noob. And by the way, guys, look at that A-plus right there. I'm just saying. And doesn't that make that draft look a little bit better? Um, but really my favorite pick here was Christian Haynes. What's wild is it came down to should we draft Christian Haynes and miss out on Junior Colson but get Cedric Gray in the fourth round or should we take Junior Colson, miss out on uh, Christian Haynes, and then potentially try to get a lower tier guard um, with the next pick? But we went Christian Haynes at 58. Then we went tackle Dominic Pooney um, at the 88 spot. Then we got Bo Limmer in the 91st spot, center out of Arkansas. 
At 126, we went Cedric Gray, linebacker, Mike linebacker out of North Carolina. With the 169 pick, we took safety Jalen Simpson. At 202, we took halfback Isaiah Davis, who I just added him to my board, by the way. Yeah, Chris, I, thank you for specifying that because I think it was earlier today or maybe last night he said it, and I'm like, is he saying he's a bust? I'm, he's, no, he's saying he's going to bust out. So what's crazy is on my board, I finally worked in Isaiah Davis. We've seen his name over and over and over, and we're impressed with the PFF stuff. Neither when I was in, in, he actually came into the 95 spot on my board. He was the 24th highest graded running back in college football in 2022, the very first ranked running back in college football, according to PFF, last year. And then on the consensus big board in January, he was 145th, and the 33rd team had him at 151. So obviously the PFF grades are pulling him way up the board, but again, got him in the 95 spot there. That's interesting. Uh, two not team, we got Traven Wallace. Again, I think it's a little bit unrealistic to think he's going to drop that far. That's another mock backer. So we took two mock backers, right? Let them compete. You got your backup mock. You can have Quay play the will. You can have Isaiah McDuffie and uh, Christian Welch and Eric Wilson battle it out for that other linebacker spot there. Um, you got uh, Gabe Hall we took at 245 at defensive line out of Baylor. I thought that was a pretty decent pick. And then, of course, at 255, we went edge defender Miles Cole. So round the horn here, Tim. Other than you guys making fun of me for Tyler Newbin, how do you feel about this mock right here, Tim? Uh, I like it. I, I, I I'm not against taking Christian Haynes uh, like a lot of people are. Um, Kool-Aid, I, I don't know. I mean, that it, that's another one of those picks, right? If, if he falls to you at 25, do you take him? You know, I, I think you do. I'm not super concerned about the, uh, the foot fracture that he's been dealing with, especially after watching him in his 40s. So um, Bo Limmer I like, uh, our Kansas in the house. That's another uh, developmental type move at uh, center. Obviously, we talk about Cedric Gray. Can't say enough about him. Actually, what I think a lot of like sneaky value towards the end of your draft is Trevin Wallace out of Kentucky. Uh, that's a linebacker I've had my eye on, too. So I, I like it. I really do. All right. Oh. Mr. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a dangerous one. He says, Christian Haynes isn't that high. Check out other rankings. Uh-oh, we found Bukowski's burner. <laughs> <laughs> so Christian Haynes was the sixth highest graded guard in 2022. He was the 13th highest graded guard in 2023. And you go, that's PFF. Okay. Drop PFF out of the way. Consensus big board, 89. Um, the 33rd team had him in the 47 spot. So you take all that information into account, as well as his plus nine RAS, is puts him in the 27 spot for me. So we were able to get the 27th best prospect, according to my board, at 58. I'm eager to see where you think he uh, ranks at there, Mr. Duckskin, to see uh, yeah, see your take there. So I'm big on Christian Haynes for sure, though. And you're right, that may be Bukowski, although I don't think Bukowski would ever have a cool dog like that, to be honest. Yeah, that is a really cool dog. Like he would have more of a chihuahua. Or something yeah, like yeah, So exactly. No chihuahua hate, I'm just saying. So um, <laughs> I hate Chad Inc. says, y'all want to see a dead body? <laughs> so, oh, anyway, um. Let's see here. <laughs> M. Smitty says, picking my draft crush in Davis makes this an A++. Uh, let's see. Many mocks have him in the fifth and sixth. Really? Who's mocks? Who's mock drafts? I'd like to see those because I have never seen that. Yeah, I've never seen him mocked in the fifth and sixth round. Now, you may be listening to one specific podcaster. Um, that could be the case. Let me – uh you guys oh, talk – Jacob, talk about that draft for a second. I'm going to go to the consensus mock drafts and see where they have Christian Haynes. Because he yeah, may be honest, uh, I, I did actually love this draft. What I would do is, um, other than the last two picks, because in my opinion, and again, we're talking right here about how mock drafts are so semi-unrealistic, but in one of those last two picks, I wouldn't have went edge. I wouldn't have went dig line. I would have probably went linebacker again, and I would have tried to get – Kitan Aladapo, because apparently in PFF, he falls to the seventh round, which again, it's not realistic. So I think that as we're doing this as a little bit of a, um, you know, we're not, we're, we're not actually trying to get mad at you, Duckskin. We're just trying to put out information. You know, we're not ever going to jump on people for, <clears throat> you know, making claims. I'm mad as hell. Don't you speak for me, Jake? What, what we have to do, though, <laughs> is just look at the evidence right now. And it's like, there's no way that 
that dude's falling to the fifth or sixth. Um, and yeah. maybe there's a situation where, like, there's an off-field situation, but um, – no, I don't. I don't see that as a realistic option. But I do like that draft. Like I said, I would have just changed the last two picks. Is my opinion, gotcha. just positionally. So in the mock draft database, which takes everyone's mock draft into consideration, the mock po- mock draft popularity for Christian Haynes is seventeen percent. Um, he gets drafted number sixty to UConn, or not to UConn, from UConn to the Buffalo Bills. So if we were to go up, I think it usually it's tells you how many mock drafts are in the system doesn't it usually say that um it doesn't say right here that's that's one week ago too by the way so let's go back two weeks in case that's what he's referring to let's see where christian haynes was getting mocked a couple of weeks ago because he may have uh recently risen although i think if anything he's dropped here lately um probably right around there he is two weeks in the 53 spot so yeah, um, I think you're going to see him somewhere between the second and third round. I don't think there's any chance he sneaks into the first round. But right. uh, it could be second, could be third, possibly fourth, but I I haven't seen him going in the fifth. Or That's sixth. where I would think he, if he's going to fall, it'd be fourth. That would be pretty shocking, but I don't see anything later than, than that. I see mid-third, yeah. All right, so – Anything else you want to hit on here, Jacob, with this mock draft that you want to pick apart? We're going to talk about Isaiah Davis here in a second. No, I kind of like the strategy that you did there. You went with the cornerback first, safety second, and then you went three offensive linemen because you just pam, pam, pam. Bro, I thought I'd get roasted for it, and everybody loved it. I actually really do love it because it's like you took (laughs) – you took what are the most glaring needs on this Packers team? I would argue it's safety, cornerback, offensive linemen. And now what you did is pew, 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 hit them all down. Then we got Dominic Cooney who can maybe take over for a guy. If we have to kick a guy maybe at right tackle in the center, huh? Bo Limmer, hey, if we need a center that maybe can take over for him so we don't have to keep a guy in the right guard, I think that's perfect. Cedric Gray, absolutely great. Jalen Simpson's a guy that can play in the slot and um, multiple different positions. Isaiah Davis is obviously awesome. Trevin Wallace, I'm starting to come around on and might be one of the better Mike linebacker options in this draft. So... <clears throat> To get him in the quote unquote six, I don't think that's realistic. I think he's gonna be third, fourth. Um, and then I don't know the other two guys. I do know him, but I just I don't care. <laughs> there you go. All right. I'll see M. Smitty in the chat said I would agree Haynes is not lasting that long. In fact, I doubt he makes it that deep into the third, especially if there's a run on offensive linemen. And, and that's what's gonna be interesting is once these players start uh coming off the board at specific positions, that's when you know all right, the the avalanche is coming, right? So um, yeah, so as far as Isaiah Davis, you know, I, I really don't know what to think. Again, he's he's coming in right there around my top 100 mark. I'm eager to see where Daniel Jeremiah has him. You know, I, I trust Daniel Jeremiah's judgment over mine, obviously, especially when I'm just compiling information. I'm not actually, you know, going and studying the tape, writing up strengths and weaknesses and that, that type of thing. But um, we'll see where he falls. Now, Gabe Hall, we got him in the 245 spot. He's 194 on my board, so I really like that pick. We kind of combed through and found him, um, so that was interesting. But the the thing that bothers me, again, it's either Junior Colson at 58 or Christian Haynes. Um, if I were to tell you deep down, if Cedric Gray hadn't been there, and again, my board is different from most people's. Obviously, on my board, he should have been taken somewhere a little bit earlier than the 70th pick, uh, he being Cedric Gray. So if it wasn't that we were, you know, sitting back going, oh, yeah, we'll definitely get him at 126, I probably would have went with Junior Colson at 58. So um, I, this is the two guys that I want to see happen, you know, as far as on draft night. One of these two guys, I want Tyler Newbin or I want Junior Colson, one of those. If we get one of those two guys, I'm feeling really good about the direction this defense is going. Now, if Goody trades up to 16, which we're going to do that tomorrow, obviously we're kind of – time here we'll definitely do that trade up to 16 i know i'm gonna hate it because the amount of capital we're gonna have to give up you know what i mean we're gonna lose a pick and 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 who are we going up after it at 16 who's the first person that comes to mind for you guys i'll start with you jacob if you trade up 16 who are you going after to gene to gene yeah or or honestly if um fontenu yeah let's see since since that's the uh since you said to gene um, Tim, first of all, who do you think we're going up? I'm to? laughing that you're even asking me. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. Yeah. Are you going to say Rake Straw? 
I swear to God. Here's the guy. Well, actually, I think we should trade up to eighth and get Ray Strong. <laughs> now, um, Cooper DeGene here, obviously being mocked to the Packers, 24% mock draft popularity. So um, I know since the – since the measurables, the you know the uh, the pro day and all that, probably a decent chance he's going to go before then. Although if you listen to Greg Cosell talk about the gene, he's a little lower on him, right? So I don't know, man. If I had to pick for 16th, I think it's one of those tackles. I think there's going to be a run on tackles, and I think if they were to trade up to 16, then they would get one of those tackles that they like, whether it's Amarius Mims or a JC Latham. Yeah, I could see Arnold Latham. too. I could see Arnold too. You know that might be their favorite corner in the draft, right? Um, Paul, when you're, what about a what about a guard? You wouldn't go interior that early. It's kind of like it's kind of frowned upon to go yeah. interior in the first round. You know, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with. It. I don't have any you know personal problem with it. But when we look at the mock draft, let's see. Graham Barton is the first one to go at 21. Um, let's see. Jackson Powers Johnson would be the second one to go at 24. And again, we don't know if this is how it's going to fall. But there's a lot of mock drafts thrown in this <laughs> database, so. Those are the only two that it seems like the mock draft database uh, considers being worthy of a first round pick is Jackson Powers Johnson and before him Graham Barton. So um, yeah, we'll kind of kind of keep an eye on that. PJ at twenty five in one of my mocks. Anything can happen. Oh, absolutely. Have to trade up. Definitely. Definitely. So all right, cool. Jake, have you got anything you want to hit on, man? I know you sent me a graphic earlier. Let me go pull that up real quick. I'm gonna screenshot it. And Actually, throw it in. yeah, I'd love to touch on that if you can bring that up. Otherwise, um, United Base just commented there and he goes, I don't see any value in us trading up. Our bread and butter is after the first round, and I really do agree with that. It's like let us go. Yep. And if anything, it's like first pick is like, you yeah, know, but then like second through six is just fire. So why don't we just let that thing cook, man? And then this is another good one. Uh, I used to be DeGene or Bust. Now I'm O-line all day. I'm, I'm almost there with you, bud, but I, it's either O-line or cornerback to me has to be the first pick in the draft just to set up the, the, the logistics of the rest of it kind of has. Get ready for a linebacker then. <laughs> just <gonna say. laughs> it's funny, though, Joseph, what you said there, man, because everybody kind of evolves as – the draft gets closer, right? We You got your favorites. And if you had asked me two months ago, all right, who do you hope they take? It'd probably be totally different from where I'm at right oh, now. Really? The more information comes down the pike. And, um, when we it, signed it, Xavier McKinney, I was – I instantly jumped off of that safety in the first mentality, you know. I mean, still right. a big priority, right? But, no, man, you feel, you feel a lot better about the safety room now with him in town. So, Yeah, and it tells you what Goody thinks about the safeties in the draft. You go out and go, okay, if we thought we could get a post safety in the draft that's worthy of, you know, uh, an early pick and a potential starter, then you probably don't try to sign McKinney. I bet he looked up and said, all right, this dude, we aren't going to be able to touch anything near the yep. potential that Xavier McKinney has playing post safety, that deep, deep middle safety in a in a cover one man or a uh, or a cover three buzz that, that they like to run out of that kind of that tree from, from the old Pete Carroll system that's evolved into the uh, – Robert Sala defense there in the New York Jets and obviously San Francisco kind of carrying on that tradition. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, so I got that screenshot, Jacob. Oh, no, nope, that's the wrong one. Is that, the one? is that it? No, that's not it, is it? All right. Yes. Yeah. Here we go. So all the Christian Watson haters out there, Jacob, you have the floor, sir. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, Lincoln's not so a I'll hater. <laughs> Anyways, <Lincoln's> <laughs> I just think that this is amazing when people stop and really start to criticize what we have in our wide receiver position. Um, I think it's easy to criticize them because like you talked about, or like we've talked about, there isn't an actual X or a number one, right? Well, is that a problem or is that an actual additional plus to like the fact that you don't know who you're supposed to card um, on any given play. You don't know who you're supposed to double team you, uh, number two guys. If you were listening on the pod, uh, Christian Watson's at 12 touchdowns, leading the 20, 20, 22 draft class in the most receiving touchdowns. Christian Watson's at 12. Romeo Dobbs is at 11. Jahan Dotson's tied with him at 11. And then it goes down to George Pickens, Chris Olave, Isaiah Likely, Garrett Wilson, who <laughs> Jake Ferguson, Drake London, and Kate Otten. So, <clears throat> I mean, for those of you listening on the pod, for <laughs> those of you listening on the pod, what are you thinking this actually means? I mean, to me, this seems that Goody has been killing it out of the absolute i mean just nailing it out of the park with what he does with 
Now, these two here are not even con like th there's no addition to Dontavian Wicks, to Bo Melton, to guys like Malik Heath, to uh, Jaden Reed. I mean, we are absolutely stacked at the wide receiver position. And to people that are talking about Christian Watson being made of glass and blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, he's done this by while he's quote unquote made of glass, while he's being a fragile guy. If he ends up and like, if he ends up fixing whatever this issue is with that hamstring, this guy is going to cook. And I'm talking like Emerald, Chef Lagasse, Gordon Ramsay cooking. <laughs> He's not giving no you-know-whats. So I'm just yeah, saying. Here we go. Tim, what do you think, sir? I'm with it. I've been saying that about Scoot since he got here. You know, a lot of people want to want to dog him, but that guy will tilt a game really quick. And, um, <laughs> you know, you, you mentioned the depth we have, too. The amount of attention that a guy like Watson draws from a defense is the reason why you see a lot of our other receivers just running butt naked through the trailer park, as Clayton would say. So, um, yeah, I'm all for it, man. I hope this is the year, you know, year three for Scoot, injury free. Let's see, uh, you know, let's see 17 games out of them this year. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. Like Durant just said, uh, do you rant? Christian's missed 11 games and he still has the most touchdowns out of that class followed again by number two mr romeo romeo we're out though romeo dobbs just say it keep in mind romeo, romeo, Rome. romeo dobbs was taken in the fourth round the 132nd pick all right christian watson was a second round pick some of these guys i'm pretty sure george pickens was a first round pick chris olave was a first round pick garrett wilson was a first round pick drake london was a first round pick i'm almost positive those were all first round picks so goody just in the kitchen cooking man He's in there cooking, no doubt about it. Um, love what Joseph said here in the chat. Dobbs put his foot in the turf in those playoffs. Message sent to Watson and Wicks that will only make more diamonds under pressure, man. Yep. I'm telling you, as the macho man Randy Savage once said, the cream will rise to the top. He said it a little a little more aggressively than that than me, but, you know. <laughs> um, so, you got Jake Shavink in the house. So, there you go. Pickens was a second. So, I'm pretty sure he was a high second if I remember correctly. I remember everybody talking about he's the best – wide receiver in the draft potentially. And uh, I just remember all the horror stories I heard, you know, about him and uh, down, I think it was in Georgia, I believe it was, where he spit on somebody. He got into a fist fight, altercation with the coach. And it was just like, yeah, I don't see Goody wanting to take this dude. So yeah, I remember when he got picked in the draft, he was wearing that stupid thing over his face, just staring at the TV. Like a complete yeah. psycho. Absolutely hilarious. Dude. And everybody's like, is that the same guy that drafted Antonio Brown? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm trying to think, too. It seemed like there was something that Pickens did that was kind of notable in college. I may be getting him crossed up with someone else. There was someone who, like, did historic top stuff in the SEC as far as uh, the um, – says he went 50 seconds. Not quite. 50 seconds, yeah. So, there you go. Second-round pick. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I don't I really don't think it's worked out. And it seems like they're trying to cater to him in Pittsburgh. They're trying to make it work with him, you know. And um it just I don't know. It seemed like they had a, a few problems out of him last year too with his attitude. It was starting to surface a little bit. You would think if anybody could handle him, it'd be Mike Tomlin, but I don't know. The picture though on draft night, Jake, like you were talking about, freaking hilarious. Dude. It's just weird. Dude. Standing, I gotta pull it up. Y'all say something smart. We gotta find it. SDN forty here saying to be fair, eight of those touchdowns came in a four game stretch. Take it for what it's worth. Uh, I believe he's talking about Scoot. Yeah, yeah but you're um, making my point. Is that yeah. he was healthy in that stretch? Yeah, but he it's also scared. how quickly he can contribute when he is healthy, right? Right. And like even uh, two years ago against Philly, when um, Jordan Love had to step in, and we just saw it was like he was just keyholing. Christian Watson the whole time and Watson was butt naked through the trailer part even with safety help over the top torch in the defense and Philly you know they're not known for having a <laughs> terrible defense so uh he is he's wow. a game changer for sure <laughs> we were here at the same time read, read that to him there Jacob he says but fields will help Pickens help fix him don't you know didn't you know that Clayton <laughs> 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 Oh my gosh. Let's see here. I got the I got the pick for you here, Jacob. You ain't ready for this, man. We found it. it may oh, be a little man. blurry. I had to screenshot it off the interwebs here, but um, let's see what we got here, man. This is George Pickens tweeted this out as soon as he was drafted. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Pat like, imagine that's something. your pick and that flashes over and you're like <laughs> right right yeah yeah I feel solid about this one yep <laughs> Pat McAfee has talked about that picture more than anything, bro. Like he, they always crack up when they talk about it. Um, let's kind of see. I'm going to go back to the mock draft database. Um, Christian Watson was drafted in 2022, right? Am I thinking right? That was the 2022 class. So let's see um, where they had him mock draft him being George Pickens and win. So there's Drake London at 15. George Pickens, George Pickens, George Pickens. Me being in the South, too, that may have been where I heard it the most was everybody was just crazy. It, it's, the SEC runs so deep down here, man. They're like, it's all that matters down here. And I I, I got to be honest, man, I'm kind of sitting back rooting against them sometimes. So I can't um, look at this picture anymore. I, I got It's got to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Bro. We got to put that other one there. That, there you go. That's a better, better one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Let's see if we can go. Let me try it this way. Y'all, get ready to wrap this thing up. Give me your parting thoughts, and we'll see if we can find this on the big board here. I guess I would, uh, Tim, while Clayton's uh, messing around over there on the porridge, uh, what are you thinking of the Joseph? I don't know how to re reel. Uh, because the elephant in the room is that Watson and Love have a lack of chemistry, basically. But he's saying that they're not on the same page. He's just healthy. You know, Bates disagrees and says, I don't think it's chemistry. It seems to be timing. Um I, that that's it right there. I, I'm with Bates on this one. And that's what happens when you're available, then you're not. And then you're available and then you're not available. And then you're gone for a month and then you come back and it's like, hey, remember what we were doing a month ago? Yeah. And everything's just kind of out of whack. When I when I think of chemistry, I don't the amount of time I spent around the team last year, I didn't get any kind of lack of chemistry vibes between any of the players. It felt like all these guys wanted to just play for each other. Um so I think Bates is right there. I think it's a timing thing with your reps. You're going to be a little out of sync when you're, you know, inconsistent with your personnel. It just is what it is. Yep. Um, but like, you know, the good players they are, they do. They get it going and they're they're effective. So, yeah, I think it's just a timing thing. Assuming this is what Jake was talking about. Jake Shavink said, who said that? Talking about uh, George Pickens being potentially taken in the first round. Uh, this was the, uh, the final consensus big board of the 2022 this was, you know, like I said, right before the draft. So the very last one they had on the consensus big board, George Pickens sitting in the number 32 spot. He peaked at 31. So that's what I was referring to. Um, and obviously, I remember us having a chat about it in the Packer Net chat at the time. And I was like, man, he's just got a lot of personal issues. And and there was someone who pushed back. He'll remain nameless. But and then kind of pointed out pull the article up like this dude over here fighting with coaches and spitting on players and stuff and like the signs were always there and then of course come draft night what do you get right you get this right here too <laughs> so right off the bat bro <laughs> so yeah that's what i was referring to though jake so um again because since this big board isn't everything but i was looking at him like yeah probably going to be a first round pick sounds like he, he's at least flirting with it so um all right, that pick is gonna gonna haunt Tim's dreams tonight. There you go. <laughs> Tell you what's gonna haunt my dreams tonight is anyone who does a mock draft without Tyler Newbin in the forty one spot. <laughs> so, nah, uh, Tim, you got anything else, Bubba? Um, no, man, this is awesome. <laughs> I got I got nothing. I'm still seeing that pick. I can't. I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna go upstairs and I'm gonna see him standing in the corner. <laughs> Looking at me or something. I Let's give you something a little more wholesome here. As Chris there said, you go. Oh, honey, there you go, man. That's the one. Right there. <laughs> um, let's see here. M. Smitty says, Clayton, where was Watson sitting at? Talking about Christian Watson, I imagine, right? Well, let's climb down here. I think he was pretty much always in the second. Yeah. He Thanks. peaked 33, and at the time, he was 41st on the consensus big board. So that, that was the one and only time that I've ever called a shot. And I went, I went in for Watson for months before he got drafted. And then when, when, uh, when they announced it, I was over the moon. Over right. the moon. And I had stepped away from the stream at the time where I wasn't on there at the time. And I came in and everybody was going nuts. It was like, yeah, they traded up and got Watson. I was like, really? Holy cow. I was downstairs doing something responsible while y'all were up here just talking about your silly foosball. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, M. Smitty said, Clayton, where was Watson sitting at? So there you go, man. 41. He peaked. 
at 33. There was something else in here, too. Here we go. I like this one. M. Smitty says Clayton's going to trade up the number one with the Bears and grab Newton. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And then Chad Inc. asked a basketball question. He says, Clayton, how do you feel about Calipari going to Arkansas, talking about the basketball coach of Kentucky going to Arkansas? I personally liked it, Chad. Um, they were going to be on the hook. And I'm not a basketball fan, but my mother-in-law is like the biggest Kentucky basketball fan. So she's been keeping me up to date. But there was going to be a huge buyout. And in this case, they didn't have to do the buyout to the best of my knowledge. He kind of went out, got the offer, decided to leave. They parted ways. I thought it was classy how he left. He basically told him, hey, look, it's time for another voice. Um, I think it's cool when whether it's professional sports or college, you know, collegiate sports that, you know, two groups can kind of come together and, and just be civil about it, be mature about it, right? Uh, not go down the route that we had to go with the, with Brett Favre and the organization back in the day in Green Bay where they were just – he's on Greta Van Susteren running th them through the mud and the Packers brass is trying to keep their mouth shut. They're just trying to patch everything together. It was just such an ugly divorce. So I thought it was handled the right way. I had the opportunity to actually listen to Calipari at a business conference. He was hired to come in and speak to us about, I don't know, something <clears> like that three, four, 5,000 different business owners in the room. And he just seems like a stand-up dude. I know he's kind of gotten a bad rap over the years, but one thing he said that I use every day in life, try to use every day in life, he said they, they it was basically, uh, God, what's his name? The dude that did the interview for the podcast with Tom Brady. Oh, it's, it's his name is eluding me right now. He has been all over sports his entire career. He's like always – been right in the middle of stuff. I can't remember his name. Anyway, you guys may know Tom Brady did a podcast and this guy was like the co-host of it. Anyway, he asked him, he said, you got a room full of business owners. Um, what advice do you have for them when, when things don't go the way you expect them? And Calipari said, the best advice I can give, and this is what I always do, anytime something goes awry, something goes wrong, I'm not happy, I get depressed, something falls through, I immediately stop what I'm doing and think, who can I help? How can I help someone? How can I do something for a charity? How can I reach out and help this person add value to someone else's life? And it's amazing how your problems just kind of disappear. I thought that was really cool. Really good piece of advice. So I think Calipari is a class act, Chad. And again, there's people mad because this is a Packer podcast and we're talking Kentucky basketball, but I hate basketball with a passion, boys. I'm just telling you right now. I can't stand to watch it. Everybody flopping around. The NCAA tournament's awesome, but – Man, yeah, Jim Gray, you got it, Bates. Jim Gray, that was it, man. God, Bates is like this wealth of knowledge, dude. Unbelievable. Yeah. So Jim Gray, uh, it it was it was a really cool interview for sure. So there you go. I agree, Joseph. Ex excellent advice, man. Good things happen when you take your eyes off yourself, man. The problem is we're all human and we fail to do it more times than not, right? We all get caught up in it. So. Um, all right, let's get out of here. We'll be back in the morning for Good Morning Lambo. I don't know. I think, Tim, you're out tomorrow. You got plans, right, buddy? Yeah, I'll, I'll be out. Probably back for the evening show, though, but okay. not in the morning. Good deal. Jake, if you're available in the morning, you date Mike in it tonight. <laughs> I want to try to make it. Let's see. I, I think that's all. <laughs> that helps me a lot. I appreciate that, Jake. We'll just we'll kind of see if you can get in here. You know what I mean? So. Hi, I'm Date yeah. Mike. Nice to meet me. <laughs> Well, you know Emilio's not going to be awake, so you guys might be stuck with me going solo in the morning. Emilio's oh, going to be. Emilio, guy, just can't get up, can't go to work. What a lazy guy. <laughs> in Emilio's defense, he's been out there battling the weather all it's... week trying to do landscaping. I'm just telling you. It's and, been bad. And he's... race car beds do not move well in the rain. They don't, right? man. That is not all wheel drive. <laughs> not all wheel drive right there, boys. There ain't no all wheel drive with that stuff. So. You got to do what you got to do. Well, all right, <laughs> <laughs> we're out. Tim, Jake, appreciate y'all hopping in here with me, man. This was a lot of fun. Um, too much squeaking in basketball is what I call it. Racing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, hate true. I hate that noise. So <laughs> yeah, constantly. Yeah. All right, everybody, have a wonderful evening. Uh, we'll see you for Good Morning Lambo tomorrow. Uh, special shout out to all the Patreon. We actually had a new Patreon member uh, just uh, the other day. Let me pull it up real quick. I need to get better at this, man. I appreciate y'all supporting the stream. Um, and that's the way we're going to do it. Again, a quick reminder, guys if you have a subscription, if you have uh, not a subscription, but a uh, if you're the uh, a member here on YouTube, cancel it. Okay. If you're a member of the PTA Posse on YouTube, um, cancel it because at any point they could re-monetize the channel and you're going to hit with that charge of that membership. And we don't want to see that happen. We just kind of shifted everything over to Patreon. So um, if you want to hop over there, you can click on the link in the description of this video 
that'll send you to Patreon. You'll see the link in there. It's just Packer Fan Total Access. You can search that through Patreon and find it too. But a uh, special shout out to Chris, who just became a member of the PTA Posse over there at Patreon. We'll make sure you're entered into the giveaway there on uh, round one of the draft this year. Probably do it around pick 10, maybe maybe the, the midpoint of the first round possibly. We're going to do a drawing for an autographed Paul Horning jersey for all of the Patreon members. Um, anyone who is a, a member there, we'll put you on the wheel and we'll give that away to one lucky uh, listener that's supporting the show. So um, we got some other cool giveaways coming up too. We're going to try to do some charity stuff. I'm excited about digging through and trying to find some some charities worth uh, uh, donating to it. Not that not that any aren't worth giving to, but I'd like to find those people that are kind of down on their luck to see if we can't do something to help. So, yeah. Um, Cody McDougal in the chat. You get a ticket for not wearing a helmet, Emilio. There you, go. <laughs> you ain't scared. All right. This is what we need now on the passenger side or no, on the back seat. See how the back seat, see how he steps in. This is what we need in the back seat. We need him oh, in the back seat. That would be perfect, right? <laughs> Could you imagine that? M. Smitty, make it happen. We oh, need come on, M. Smitty. Put him reverses. Yeah, reverses yeah. stance. Oh, Put him right behind Emilio. Back seat. <laughs> Gotta make it happen. Smitty, we're depending on you, buddy. All right. We're counting on you. We need you. Come through in the clutch. Lord. All right. This show sucks. We're out of here. Appreciate everybody hanging out with us. For those of you listening on the pod, thank you for making us part of your day. As always, let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world and go back up. The power sweep. Actually, it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense. We ask our YN or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet. Get an isolation with the with the linebacker. Tell the tackle to take the defensive end if he's over and if he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker here, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here, and a seal here, and try to run this play in the alley. <laughs>